This is the sound of Japanese pop success. I want you, I want you. AKB48, the all-female group singing their way to the top of Japan's main music chart. You might think you've seen this story before, but AKB48 is not your standard pop group. Its 48 members rotate in teams to perform live almost every night. Their latest song in aid of the Japanese tsunami recovery hit number one, selling over a million copies on its first day of release. Their success inspired the creation of spin-off groups in Nagoya, Osaka and more recently in Taiwan and Indonesia. The entire AKB48 franchise includes some 150 girls, making them the largest pop group in the world. But when a group single is released, only a handful of girls are chosen, hand-picked by the fans. The man behind it all is Yasushi Akimoto. A respected music producer in Japan, he created the group in 2005 with the aim of making stars out of ordinary girls. Despite their formidable fan base in Asia, the group has also gained significant attention around the world, from New York to Moscow to Paris. But not everyone is a fan. Critics say that some of Akimoto's lyrics and costumes are too suggestive for the young performers and that the concept sexualizes the innocence of the girls. This week on Talk Asia, we're in Tokyo with music producer Yasushi Akimoto, who explains his secret to success, responds to the critics, and takes us backstage to meet the girls of AKB48. Mr. Akimoto, welcome to Talk Asia. You are a renowned music producer here in Japan, but you're also a, a lyricist, a television writer and a university uh, professor. What do you consider yourself first and foremost? I'm not particular about my titles. It goes the same with cooking, regardless of Chinese, French and Italian. They are all the same in cooking. I create songs, music, movies and TV commercials. They happen to be linked with creating. They appear different, but they are all the same for me. Also, I want to inspire young people through what I've experienced in my life at university and through education. Your claim to fame has been the formation of your girl group AKB48. They are a phenomenon here in Japan. Three key groups comprising of 48 core members. In fact, the Guinness Book of Records says it's the largest pop group in the world. Why so many performers? Take the example of cheerleading or lacrosse. I think it's really interesting to watch everyone together, working to achieve something like winning a championship. None of the girls have strong personalities, but once they get together, they bring about chemical reactions. In other words, all the girls are quite ordinary, but when they get together and each one comes into the picture, you can see their charm. So I think that's interesting. I think the other interesting thing about these girls is that they are quite ordinary. They aren't necessarily talented at dancing or singing, but you've managed to transform them into stars. In your words, idols you can meet. Uh, where did you come up with this idea? Our conventional definition of stars is that they are unreachable. That's why people feel so strongly for them. But there are not many people in Japan who can sing and dance as well as being visually attractive. There's probably a few here. With this in mind, if you have even one of those talents, or if you make the effort to fulfill your dreams, we can showcase that process which is represented by AKB48. Usually talented people compete at auditions, and those people grow to become stars through a series of hard lessons. When they make their debut, it's time to show them to the world. But in the case of AKB48, we reveal them prior to that process. You say that you choose the girls based on their personalities, but they are all pretty cute young girls who obviously attract a lot of male attention. Who is your target audience? 
There is no target in my mind. If we set a target, it begs an answer. So target markets should not be specified. We gauge the audience reaction and then change the formation little by little. I think that should be the way. If we concentrate on the marketing and decide what direction to take next, the group will end up with a sort of made-up sense of harmony. So first, we let these girls perform here. We watch to see if the audience reacts to the girls' performance, contrary to how we expected. Then we move ahead while learning, little by little, like that. Well, the group was formed back in 2005, and in the past six years, you've released four albums with 23 singles, many of them at number one hits. I think your latest single sold more than a million copies in the first day. Are you surprised by this success? Well, yes. I didn't foresee these figures. I'm not a businessman, and so I can't formulate a business plan that will tell me these measures will lead to better sales or that we will sell this much. But what I believe is, if young people get hooked on something, it will spread. When I made TV programs, I tried to make it so that everyone, from kids to the elderly, could enjoy TV as mass media. That's not the case with AKB48. It began because I knew there are people who like this type of entertainment, regardless of target audiences. We made something that appeals to people. At first, there were maybe only seven people who came to watch, but then it was 14 people, 28, 56, 112, and that number was snowballing. This has made what AKB48 is now. Every person listening to their music and watching DVDs have different opinions of AKB48. In other words, because the girls are really cute, the attraction for some people is that they imagine them as their girlfriends or their idols. Girls who are around the same age as the AKB girls try to become like them and work really hard towards that. With the older generations, it's not that they are striving to realize their dreams like AKB, but they want to cheer the girls on. This idea has spread quickly. It's led to a number of sales as a result. It is not just the music and the girls that attract the fans, it's also the, the amount of power that uh, you give to the people. You hold these general elections in which people can vote for who is in the group, who will sing a solo, who will get to be the voice in an anime series. Tell me about this process. Originally, the group consisted of 20 or so members. All the members were able to appear on CD jackets or on TV programs. But now the number of members is rapidly expanding, and pictures on CDs can't fit in everyone. Music programs also limit the number of members who can appear on their show. That being the case, I have to select members. I have to choose someone from the group. I submit this formation or this team with 16 girls, just like a manager of a baseball or football team. However, some fans then started to say, why hasn't producer Akimoto included this girl and why did he choose that girl? We've received many comments like that, so I said, I get it, I get it. Okay then, we will have to make a dream team, like an all-star team in baseball, based on votes from fans. That's why we came up with an idea of a general election. AKB is evolving, and it's not based on a concept or plan deriving from marketing data, but rather we listen to voices from people in the era of the Internet and decide to grow in this direction or that direction based on those voices. Coming up, AKB48 goes to Indonesia. We find out which girls made the cut.